Inside this laboratory, images are transformed into virtual reality. It's all part of one of the leading intelligence fusion centers in the world. Jayat of South, the Joint Interagency Task Force, located in Key West, Florida. Their job is to detect and monitor 42 million square miles, an area 12 times larger than the United States, to stop the illicit shipment of narcotics and other dangerous threats. Cocaine's our number one target because that's the largest commodity that is illicitly moved across our area of responsibility. It's not about going after the cocaine. It's about going after the organizations that are doing this. Will we catch them all? Of course not. But we can have a significant impact against them. It's a 24-7 operation, an organization represented by all five military branches, a multitude of federal agencies, and 13 partner nation governments and military liaison officers. Radars from ships, planes, and other locations are combined with incoming intel, photographs, and videos, tracking more than 1,000 targets a day considered suspect. Today, Priority One is a craft built by drug cartels called a self-propelled semi-submersible that for nearly two years has been known as Bigfoot. For a long time uh, in uh, the mid-2000s, uh, there was a lot of conversation about whether or not the traffickers were using these self-propelled semi-submersibles. And DEA and other law enforcement agencies had some intelligence that they were actually using them, but we were never able to confirm it. We, we had not seized one, we had not actually even seen one. They have a low profile. They, uh, they've even gone as far as to take their exhaust and, and they funnel that into the water. So they, they have even a less of a heat signature, which makes it more difficult for, for us to detect. Semi-submersibles, known as SPSSs, are built in the Amazon jungles of South America, made of fiberglass, wood, and steel. They are nearly impossible to detect by radar and can travel from one continent to another without the need to refuel. They can also carry up to 10 tons of cocaine. The discovery began inside an aging warehouse in Bogota, Colombia. Scattered Russian documents were found, along with a half-built vessel, 100 feet in length. The cartels that build them are part of an $88 billion per year global market. In the words of one government official, they are a ruthless, dangerous, and highly mobile enemy. Smuggling routes that once dominated the Eastern Pacific have all but been eliminated. Today, cartels favor the coastlines from Colombia to Mexico, Guatemala, and Honduras. It's the route of more than 90% of cocaine destined for the U.S. To get there, Thousands are murdered, government officials are corrupted, and the safety and security of entire nations are threatened. Uh, our challenge is they will, they will do whatever it takes. Uh, they will take the path of least resistance, and they, as we do, they will use technology and innovation to try and uh, find our weaknesses and overcome the challenges so that they can move the largest amount of drugs. Honduras is the number one arrival zone for cocaine trafficking uh, from the maritime and also from the air. Uh, and each time this cocaine touches land, uh, it brings with it violence, corruption, uh, a lack of respect for rule of law, and it affects families in Central America and in Mexico. It's not just uh, the amount of drugs that we take uh, from the traffickers. Um, if you talk to, this is a law enforcement problem, and if you talk to the law enforcement experts, it's really about building the case so that they can be, so they can be tried in court. Near the border of Ecuador, work is already underway deep inside a mangrove-covered jungle. For the past three months, a cartel-assembled crew has worked to build a submarine to transport drugs using a blueprint, a generator, and some hand tools. Each man is paid $3,000 for a fisherman in a small village and others. The money is needed to survive. A man from the cartel offered job to me build boat to carry shipment far away. For two days, we go down river, Colombian jungle, then several nights, stay in small hut. No one tell where we go. Then four soldiers with rifles take us, another boat, go farther into the jungle, place with many men holding guns. Here, we told to build until work was done. Within a few days, 
the submarine and four men would ride across the ocean inside a 12 by 6 room. In its bow, large quantities of cocaine, a shipment likely valued at over $100 million. We're sitting in the pilot house. Uh, the pilot house here, um, as you can see, there's not many places that you can see out of. The, your field of view is very limited. These are only two portholes that you can actually pilot the craft from. It takes some time to get down these mangrove rivers to the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's going to be a hairy ride because, as you can see, the, the limited sight distance, it's going to be very hard to, to navigate through obstacles. Um, so it's not, not going to be an easy thing. If you suffer an engineering casualty and you're stuck out at sea for a long period of time, you may die of dehydration or starve to death. At Jayadav South, the intel gathered for months is beginning to lead toward a single target. A dozen fusion cells analyze incoming data, collected from various law enforcement activities. This information shared with international, regional, and European partners. Evidence is gathered and leads are pursued quickly. The challenge of stopping these cartels has become increasingly difficult as they find new ways to transport their cocaine resourced with a nearly 99% profit margin and a revenue stream that grows exponentially higher each year. We'll never be ahead of them. We're always going to be in a tail chase with the traffickers. But the way we look at it, every time the traffickers develop a new method to transport the dope, every time they, they utilize a, a, a new uh, a vessel or an SPSS or or even when they change routes, or even when they, anytime they do anything at all that's different than what they've done in the past, that's actually a success. The work is to find targets that will have the greatest probability of ending in successful interdiction, to stop the dirty cargo from being moved on rivers, over vast oceans, in the air, and over land. Here at Joint Interagency Task Force South, an agent simply walks a single corridor and is able to access the resources of nearly every intelligence and law enforcement agency in the world. In three decades, they've mastered the art, detect a target, monitor its movement, then find and deploy assets to interdict the enemy. This is really like an information brokerage house, and everyone can compare what everyone has on certain cases, and we combine that information and it, it helps us all in, able to, in order to uh, facilitate the interdi interdiction of, of, of the trafficking. You need an organization which is agile, which can react on a dime. Days into their journey, the craft built deep in the Amazon is now drifting out to sea. The plan was for the vessel's captain to call base two times daily, giving coordinates and receiving information on a potential rendezvous. Cartels connect miles from land with what is typically called a go-fast. The cocaine then delivered to shore. Valves are opened. The work of the SPSS is done and it quickly sinks to the ocean floor. But today, communications are lost. The makeshift crew has shut down engines and the sub is drifting aimlessly. A nervous waiting game begins. This inside a chamber that often exceeds 150 degrees. In another sector, a Key West Coast Guard cutter prepares for a day of routine patrol. But the logs from November 2006 would record a day far from ordinary. By many accounts, it was historic in the decades-long war on drugs. In a matter of hours, a crew much like this one would discover something strange on open waters, a hundred miles off the coastline of Costa Rica. The log report states the sighting of what appears to be three snorkels extended above the surface far out to sea. The infamous Bigfoot has been located. You know, I look at drug submarines as kind of the Super Bowl of uh, interdictions uh, because they can carry so much cocaine. You can't see it till you're about, from a surface level, from another ship, till you're about a mile away from it. And even then, it's, it's challenging because it just hovers at the top. Uh, on the water. Jayat of South quickly forms its end game, collaborating with U.S. Coast Guard law enforcement detachment officials, the DEA, FBI, and Colombian and Costa Rican authorities. A technologically advanced submersible vessel, once only imagined, is soon captured. Inside a crew of four, an AK-47, and three tons of cocaine. When we actually got the sighting, I uh, believe it was a 
I believe it was a Customs P3 that actually sighted this craft first off the coast of Costa Rica. It caused a, a lot, quite a little bit of excitement. We get very excited over SPSSs and uh, uh, on the watch floor, uh, we're immediately calling, uh, calling our bosses and uh, all the way up to our two star. We get excited about them because it usually means anywhere from four to six metric, metric tons of cocaine, which is a huge number. But in years to follow, challenges would continue while success in finding the semi-submersibles has become far less mythical today, reports suggest that only 14% of these vessels are being detected. Since 1989, Chiatov South has worked to confiscate 3,000 metric tons of cocaine and 345 metric tons of marijuana. In two decades, they deprived the ever-rich drug cartels nearly $200 billion in profits. The agency, working with partner nations, has accounted for an estimated 50% of all cocaine interdictions in the world. Is it a wise choice of resources? I would think so. I would think, what is the, what's the danger in having a couple countries in Central America that become failed states? What's the impact to the United States? I would say that the impact is, is quite significant. For the first time, I think, We've got all these partnering nations moving in the same direction against this threat. We're seeing cooperation between nations that we have not previously seen. The question is, is it enough? Cartels continue to invest millions on new technologies to transport their drugs, including a now fully submersible submarine able to operate on battery power making the vessel completely invisible to radars. For every shipment that goes undetected, the end result is more drugs on our streets. It's a place where America quickly turns to crack houses, painted walls of gang graffiti, and violence that never seems to end. It's a reminder to all of us that we've got to continue to work hard and try to get ahead of these guys as much as we can because they're moving forward. <laughs> they're going to continue to evolve. They're going to continue to develop all the different techniques and use the money and use their resources to figure out ways to thwart our efforts. We've pushed it. We've pushed the, the, the end game all the way back to the source zone. That's an accomplishment. Whether you're in Kansas, Kandahar, Panama, Bogota, people all over the world want the same thing, that's safety, that's security. Nobody wants to live in an environment that's wrecked by chaos, lawlessness. Taking drugs off the streets in the source zone before they become sold in your community is, is a righteous fight. We are very proud to be part of that effort.